so next formula that we want to study now is FCFF and there are four different set of formulas that we would be required to remember so first we'll derive an easy technique to remember them the first possible way in which we can calculate FCFF is with we start with net income to which we will add back non-cash charges and reduce the working capital investment once you've done these three adjustments or these two adjustments to net income what will you get cash flow from operations so this is same as CFO and once you have CFO then we have to make two important adjustments one is that add back interest because we had reduced it from net income okay and we'll spend some time on discussing why we have to add back this is net of tax and reduce the fixed capital investment so these are your first two formulas for calculation of FCFF so net income plus non-cash charges minus working capital investment and then in both the cases this gives us CFO in both the cases we will add back interest and we will reduce fixed capital investment now the third formula it starts from EBIT so we will say EBIT into 1 minus T and once you say EBIT into 1 minus T this number is same as the total of net income and interest okay so this number takes care of these two items and what it would give us cumulatively that these two so this is taken care of so we simply plot the remaining numbers and then you have your next formula where it starts from EBIT you are required to remember these formulas explicitly and the last formula it starts from EBITDA okay so what we do is EBITDA into 1 minus T and then we add back depreciation into the tax rate which would give us these two numbers here together so we'll see how it works EBITDA into 1 minus T plus depreciation into T this is equal to these two numbers and once we know that then we just need to plot the remaining ones and you have your EBITDA formula ready so these are the four set of formulas now we'll do a quick example to understand uh, why all of these numbers turn out to be same so let's write down the example here sales hundred less operating cost of 20 this is your EBITDA 80 less depreciation 20 EBIT 60 let's say less interest 30 you have EBT of 30 let's say tax rate of 12 you have earning after taxes of 18 let's assume that working capital investment is minus 10 and fixed capital investment is 0 ok so in our working capital we have invested 10 and we have purchased new fresh assets this year of 0 so this is your example sales 100 minus operating expenditure all cash 20 EBITDA 80 minus depreciation 20 EBIT 60 less interest 30 EBIT 30 tax 12 and EAT 18 let's plot the numbers in the first formula net income which is 18 non-cash charges what would be those depreciation which is 20 minus working capital investment so we know that this number is given as negative 10 plus interest into 1 minus t how much is interest here 30 30 into 1 minus t what was the tax rate tax rate was 40 percent because we took 40 percent of 30 so 1 minus t which means 60 percent 30 into 60 percent how much would this be 18 this is 1 8 and this number is anyway 0 so let's take a total now this is 
36 plus 20 56 minus 10 the answer would be 46 so this is your free cash flow to form from the first formula now carefully look at the second one when I start with EBIT that means I'm starting here 60 and to the 60 I directly say into 1 minus T okay so 1 minus T means 60 into 60 percent this number would be 36 now can you see that this 36 is nothing but directly a total of this 18 and this 18 yes and once you know that EBIT into 1 minus T is this then you simply need to plot remaining numbers and automatically your formula would be same and this number would also come out to be 46 when we start with EBITDA which is 80 here so 80 into 1 minus T and now see we directly charging taxes taxation on EBITDA so 80 into 60 percent this would be how much 48 how much was your depreciation 20 20 into 40 percent how much would this be 8 so what is the total of 48 plus 8 56 is the same as 36 plus 20 yes so we've taken care of these two numbers so minus working capital investment 10 and again the answer would be 46 cash flow from operations is total of these three numbers so 18 plus 28 38 minus 10 this is 28 this is 18 and again the answer is 46 are we clear now what is the intuition behind the number the intuitions here is that we use them these numbers which is FCFF for valuation of an entire firm okay so now please try to understand this have you written the example this is balance sheet of an organization these are all the assets that the firm possesses, and we are assuming a very simple structure where we are saying that on the liability side it has got only two fronts one is equity and one is debt when you are calculating value of firm you want to calculate the all the cash flows which are available to equity and all the cash flows which are available for debt both of them together and since you want to find out cash flows for all the firm you start with CFO meaning of CFO is how much cash flows I have been able to generate during the year now when you calculated CFO did we reduce interest when we calculated CFO do we reduce interest as outflow yes so interest has been reduced so we need to add it back so we say plus interest into 1 minus T now the question is why do we take this as 1 minus T the implicit assumption here is that we want to find out cash flows for both of them and therefore we are not going to pay any of the cash flows to equity and any of the cash flows to debt so if I do not pay them interest then of course tax authorities will not allow me to take benefit of taxes on them so which means I'll end up paying more amount of taxes and therefore we simply say interest into 1 minus t so we've adjusted the effect of tax there are we clear and then to this minus simply the fixed capital investment in order to keep on doing my business it is important to invest into new assets and then this directly gives you your FCFF okay. so from a valuation perspective we will calculate FCFF and this formula you might want to write down you say FCFF discounted at VAC what would be VAC? weighted average cost of capital this gives you value of firm and then value of firm minus value of debt will give you value of equity so this is how value of equity is derived using the FCFF formula again if you would see that let's say a firm has generated FCFF for year 1 FCFF for year, year 2 and so on and so forth 
this we are going to discount with vac every year okay so 1 plus vac raised to 1 raised to 2 so on and so forth weighted average cost of capital is made of what cost of equity and cost of debt okay and at times even cost of preference share now when we calculate cost of debt what is the formula interest rate into 1 minus t so here we say interest rate into 1 minus t which is going into vac and therefore to maintain consistency while calculating fcff when we add back interest that interest has to be again 1 minus t otherwise the whole set of equations will go wrong okay so since your denominator is using 1 minus t the numerator also needs to capture the effect of 1 minus t the second formula that we are learning today is of fcfe so once you have fcff whatever amount you pay to the bond holders that amount is to be reduced from there so when i take loan what two payments do i make i make payments for interest and i make payment for principal so we'll say minus interest but of course since we had added 1 minus t we have to reduce again 1 minus t and minus debt repayment or principal repayments so once you've reduced these two numbers from fcff what you'd have is fcfe which is free cash flow to equity and once you have free cash flow to equity then you would say fcfe discounted at cost of equity would directly be value of equity so fcff we discounted vac fcfe we discount at cost of equity <coughs> any questions you would like to ask There we added. Did we add back? So we have to reduce the same number again. 